Welcome to Studio Re, and I am Mamuka Kuparadze, anchor of the show. This discussion is going to be about uh, conflicts in uh, Georgia and uh, any topics uh, around these conflicts. And uh, let me remind you, this uh, program is supported with the uh, UN and European Union uh, program, joint program COBER. And in the first block of our program, we are going to have one guest, Mr. Tengisonitsa, uh, who represents Association Agora. And in the second block, we are going to have very interesting topic uh, about two additional possible opening uh, corridors that connect Georgia with Russia through occupied territories and uh, uh, also we are going to have different industry representatives uh, and uh, here in our discussion uh, room we have young people interested in conflict. Please uh, Tengiz, uh, thank you very much for coming here and please just uh, shortly speak about uh, that interesting project, uh, multi-sided project uh, that uh, envisages the development of business uh, uh, between Georgia and Abkhazia, some environmental uh, progress, uh, and please just speak about it. Thank you very much. Uh, let me welcome uh, uh, your viewers, and unfortunately, I cannot speak very specifically about the project for certain reasons. But as you mentioned, uh, the project is supported uh, jointly with uh, uh, Coburn, uh, you and uh, UN. Uh, supported and uh, let me sincerely thank uh, Coburn Project uh, for those great things that uh, the program has been doing in terms of development of uh, uh, trust building, confidence building. So one project was over and uh, this was a saving uh, uh, Colchian boxwood plants. Uh, the project uh, went uh, in peril uh, in uh, Georgia and Abkhazia and uh, as long as for recent years, mostly uh, the relationships uh, unfortunately was limited with, uh, I mean, with Abkhazians, only with environmental uh, issues and uh, young people issues. I mean, uh, these are topics uh, uh, to which uh, the second, I mean, the opposite side never minds. Uh, because, uh, well, as you well know, well, environmental issues definitely are painful equally for both societies, uh, both communities. Uh, uh, for example, I, I mean, just uh, we have a common enemy, like for example, marmorated uh, stink bug. Uh, I mean, uh, these bugs uh, don't recognize any borders. And so, and in this way, just you are cooperating with Abkhazians, aren't you? Yes, mostly we are cooperating on uh, environmental things. Uh, I mentioned boxwood uh, saving project. Uh, and uh, this project was uh, followed with interest about uh, other environmental projects. And the current project, which is not over yet, uh, is dedicated to environmental things. And we invited young people to participate in the project. Uh, we formulated uh, uh, ecological environmental center. So where are these people are going to work? I mean, from both sides, yes. Young people, they are going to share their experience, exchange their notes, describe issues, and uh, set goals to address these problems. This is an issue is, uh, which is very useful for both sides. Uh, and. Uh, there is another issue that contributes to confidence building between young people, and I'm very happy about that. 
Uh, let me remind our viewers, uh, I mean, the reason which you cannot uh, speak about these projects more specifically. Uh, well, the reason is, I mean, this very complicated uh, political situation, both in Russia and in territories controlled by Russia, and I hope that you will continue your work. It's a second project uh, within the framework of this project. I know that you have been involved for a long time. Uh, I think some of your projects were actually designed for business development. Yes, uh, we had a project, uh, and uh, the center of this project is in London, England, uh, and uh, they work in terms of conflict resolution. Uh, and uh, they had an office in Georgia, not only in Georgia, but uh, I mean uh, uh, in all conflict region in South Caucasus, I mean Armenia, Azerbaijan. And they had the offices in Tbilisi and Kutaisi in Georgia, and they had an office in Turkey. And uh, periodically they would organize uh, meetings and, uh, between conflict sites. And, uh, uh, and at uh, this uh, meeting, uh, different things were being discussed, maybe small scale, but in a way, just they talked to uh, what kind of relationships uh, could have been formulated between the sides. There were some experience, some trials, that's right, that's right. For example, transportation of uh, cargo through customs and borders, uh, creation of some industry-based uh, projects. Uh, example, some brands, maybe it's well, a low, high-profile work, but uh, for example, Caucasus honey, Caucasus tea, Caucasus cheese, these projects actually we are created. We are all conflict sites participated, uh, and uh, industry experts also cooperated. Uh, they created some product and uh, they would uh, supply these uh, products uh, to each other. Well, of course, uh, there was nothing much to boast about, but uh, I mean, in terms of big business, but uh, some relationships between some people and some industry experts uh, were formulated, uh, established, and even today we keep on being in touch. Thank you very much. I will ask our filmmaker to show the news media digest for the past month, and this digest is going to tell us what was happening in conflict regions. Our partners took care of that from Abkhazia Station. And uh, let's see uh, this um, blocks. And uh, just like you, we cannot name our partners, unfortunately. In June, Abkhazia started uh, supplying gravel to Russia. First uh, loaded uh, ship entered Russia's waters on June 11. The supply of Russia with gravel was decided on business forum between Russia and Abkhazia. This is the first uh, agreement according to which uh, Russian Federation will be supplied uh, with gravel and construction material. According to Economy Minister Hadgur Ar. Abkhazia is ready to supply a Russian market with 1 million ton of high-quality inert construction materials. According to the Ministry, now the reserve of Abkhazian inert materials is about 10 million tons. The budget uh, treasury system uh, has been working at full blast, and uh, since 2016 the program uh, has been implemented uh, stage by stage, and uh, by now 95% of any Entities using the system uh, uh, just met all demands. However, according to the financial minister, not all accountants were able to implement uh, this new system. According to Prime Minister Kennedy Kagulia, those entities that failed to implement new system will be uh, stopped to financing. Um, according to the minister, this doesn't guarantee, of course, eradication of uh, corruption, but still just uh, 
narrows down the availability of budget to some officials and also just controls the redistribution of the budget at, say, different stages of financing. The ninth uh, traditional judo tournament between uh, young men and uh, women uh, continued went in Sukhumi from June 21-23. Earlier it was named uh, Mayor's Cup, but now the name was changed to Abhazia's Cup. And 23 teams and about 400 uh, judo wrestlers participated from Abhazia, Russian Federation, Belarus and Donetsk People's Republic uh, uh, is a category from 7 to 15 years. Uh, 37 medals uh, were played out and according to the results, Abhazian wrestlers uh, got first places in 12 nominations. In the Central Exhibition Hall of Abhazian Painters Union, exhibition was held. Um, it was dedicated to Abhazian painter Pesorian Svechpan and his works uh, and uh, it exposed more than 70 works created since 1968. Topics are different from historical to daily sketches. Uh, however, the largest part is dedicated to women. According to the painter, creation of these pictures was inspired by Abkhazia's nature and people. Pesorian Svechpan since 1972 has been regularly participating in exhibitions in Abkhazia and outside. Today he is art director in one of the children's magazines. South Association President Anatoly Bibilov uh, visited Leningrad together with the Russian delegation. The delegation was headed with the executive director of Gazprom, Valery Golubev. At the moment, companies working on the gas supply of the region. The sites talked about the future prospects of the supply of gas to the region. Bibilov noted that initially the project was designed for five years, but according to the preliminary results, it's going to be finished much earlier. Valery Golubev, while Assessing the said that the supply of uh, non-stop supply of uh, gas to Leningrad will contribute to economic situation of Leningrad region. Uh, Commerce Chamber Presidents of Crimea and South Association signed the Memorandum of uh, Cooperation, and it was noted that the Republic is trying to attract. Uh, investments uh, and trying to establish relationships with departments of friendly countries. Uh, president Artyom Maltz, the president of uh, Crimean uh, Commercial Chamber, said that the cooperation will be oriented on promotion of South Association products in Russia, Crimea and other regions of uh, Russia. Uh, president Anatoly Bibilov uh, met with uh, Maltsev and said that the process between the countries proved one more time the movement of their relationships up to higher level. The Republic was visited with uh, by uh, Russia's South Caucasian Affairs, uh, Mr. Chebotary of uh, while meeting Anatoly Bibilo, the minister mentioned that all projects in the Republic uh, are going to be fulfilled successfully. Bibilo thanked the minister for such an assistance, and uh, while assessing, uh, the South Caucasian Affairs minister added that there are positive changes in the Republic and the South Association Republic can be proud of those outcomes. And they also talked about the future development plan for Alania. Uh, just in support of uh, SMEs, the Parliament of South Association has passed uh, lending uh, a project. project is under discussion by the Business uh, Council. Their responsibility is a uh, fair and the right distribution of the finance select the projects will be directed to Sberbank and only after that a businessman will get to proper uh, financing. Out of the budget will be 2% allocated, which is about 21 million rubles, and businessmen will pay back with 5% of interest rate. So we are back at the studio and we have more guests. <laughs> Let me introduce Marian Brigalashvili, Georgia's political institution analyst and expert, Pate Tsagarashvili, Transport Corridor Research Center Director, and Zalan Chaparidze, expert, Conflict and Negotiation International Center Program Coordinator. Thank you very much for coming here. 
We wanted very much to have a representative of the government. Unfortunately, no one has come, but the Deputy Minister of Reconciliation, Lasha Darsalia, gave an interview. Let's uh, listen to him, and then let's uh, ask you, Mrs. Maya. So agreement with the World Trade Organization in terms of uh, becoming member. This uh, agreement uh, means that, uh, I mean, uh, some corridor between uh, Russia and Georgia in terms of cargo, and it has no link to any occupied territories. There is no direct link to the conflict. Uh, so this agreement has nothing to do with that, and realistically, South Asia does not exist. And one more time, let me point out that there is no direct link to occupy territory or the representatives of the territory. This agreement has nothing to do with that. So, Mariam, in terms of becoming member of a World Trade Organization, Georgia, so to speak, uh, gave green light to Russia, and uh, it was followed with agreement, uh, and uh, this agreement is interpreted in many different ways. I think you heard that uh, Grigory Karas, in, in a very one-sided, subjective way, just interpreted this uh, agreement as if it was a recognition on behalf of Georgia, borders of uh, Georgia, and as if we were opening one uh, custom point uh, near Gori or Zogledi, but it's not like that. We also had our uh, requests and demands, and one uh, interesting point is and was an easy detail. Actually, it was direct link uh, at the border between Russia and Georgia, and we demanded uh, on uh, one uh, observer from uh, Georgia just to be there uh, on the permanent basis. So, please, can you just clarify this uh, situation? Well, uh, let's go to the history of our conflict. Uh, since 2002, we have been speaking with Russia in terms of becoming a member of World Trade Organization, but uh, actually Russia and other just WTO members were not very enthusiastic, and this period lasted up to 2011, and that's when it started the process after which, uh, uh, well, it started 2002, but as I said, there was not a, just big wish on behalf of the Russia in 2011. We got clear messages from Russia in March, and uh, they started actually some negotiations with Georgia. They wanted us to agree to their becoming members of WTO. The context was following. In this case, it was not only Russia's wish. Uh, Georgia was also had some dilemma because our international partners wanted Russia to become a member of WTO, and therefore the most important challenge for us was uh, to agree to Russia to become member of WTO, and second, to keep our sovereignty and territorial integrity within the agreement, and of course get some benefits, and uh, uh, the process started in March uh, 2011 when Georgia's uh, foreign ministry uh, tried to get uh, as many benefits as possible from this uh, agreement. Our first agreement was that our just custom officers uh, should be positioned in PSO and uh, in a Rocky Tunnel in the South Asian side or Georgia side. Of course, uh, Georgian side and uh, on Russia, the Russia's officers should have been positioned, uh, but uh, the agreement also envisaged the international observers as well to be positioned together with our officers, and we pinpointed the points. <laughs> And uh, if you look at a Prasian uh, map, uh, 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 there are just four points, uh, two points uh, 
of the territory of Russian Federation to in uh, Zugdidi, uh, and uh, we also have Larsi control points, uh, also four points are pinpointed on the map, uh, so we have different uh, picture in case of South Association, not four points, but we have ten points in this case, I mean uh, two points on the Russian Federation territory, two points in Georgia, near Gori. And what is the situation like today? So today we can't position our custom officers uh, because uh, they self-recognized republics mind and uh, Russia is not interested and uh, the agreement does not stipulate that either. I mean the agreement which we signed uh, says the following that uh, Russian custom officers will be positioned in uh, Russian territory uh, and uh, and our custom officers will be uh, positioned uh, in our territory and both Russian and Georgian points will be uh, supplemented with uh, Swiss uh, observers. Uh, so we have now just availability actually to the occupied territories. So now, here on the map, we have one main artery main way, and now it gets distributed here. In case of two quarters, so Georgia becomes a kind of network. For example, cargoes that enters from South Ossetia, it may go to all three directions, Turkey, Azerbaijan, Armenia, <laughs> And uh, if this network uh, starts working, uh, the cargo just that comes from South Asia principally may go to Abkhazia. And economically, uh, what are the benefits and uh, risks uh, for Georgia? Uh, let me point out to technical economic uh, parameters what Georgia is going to get from that, benefit from that. I mean, uh, to put uh, political issues aside, mostly three countries are interested in implementation of this project. I mean, uh, Georgia, Abkhazia, Asia, Armenia, and Russia. If we analyze condition of Russia, uh, Russia's interest in is very easy. And clear, Russia is developing uh, uh, two directions. I mean, Russia wants uh, south uh, and uh, north direction I mean, from India through Armenia. And Russia also wants to get uh, alternative, alternate uh, direction because Russia controls Armenia and Armenia's railway. And, uh, if uh, it will be supplemented with Georgian railway, it will be something like a trap, uh, and uh, Russia will be free to develop this way, and politically Russia will benefit to get direct links with India and Iran. And the second aspect is that up to Ochamchir, Russia recovered the 105 kilometer long railway, but it's not functioning and uh, uh, Russia had uh, assumed that it will be used, but today it's actually non-beneficial and uh, rather just it's uh, budget-based in Abkhazia. In terms of Armenia, well, Armenia is interested, Armenia wants, in case Larsi is not going to work, because climatically now that during four months Larsi checkpoint is closed, and uh, if this project works, uh, Armenia will get a new corridor, but... Uh, 
Uh, now let's look at it from the point of Georgia. Uh, for Georgia, I think uh, the opening of this uh, corridor, a railway corridor, is not very important because this uh, stream of cargo it's just about 8 10 million uh, tons of uh, cargo which uh, through Russia in direction of Central Asia. But this cargo actually is not actually within reach and the redistribution of uh, just the Euro-Asian uh, point. Uh, therefore, the existence of this cargo for Georgia actually uh, uh, is not important for Georgia. As for Abkhazia, for Abkhazia railway uh, opening, uh, of course, is uh, vitally important uh, uh, because only half million uh, cargo need uh, is between Abkhazia and Russia, and one million ton from Chamchira is being carried to Turkey mostly. It's called it's 1.5 million ton, and in order for Abkhazian railway to be beneficial, uh, at least uh, they need three million towns which Abkhazia doesn't have and uh, the accent uh, should be uh, just taken on a transit uh, opening uh, in case uh, just 6 million tons and uh, this means that about 80 100 million uh, dollars for Abkhazia and uh, Abkhazia will be become financially independent from Russia. And uh, first, uh, most important, uh, uh, this opening is most important for Abkhazia and uh, Russia, Armenia, and the least important is to Georgia due to Georgia's technical economical parameters. As for this uh, two direction opening, we, we can note out that uh, Georgia's administration clearly stated that opening of corridors uh, is possible only in force major condition. But when it comes, it's quite unclear yeah, because we are building new to tunnels in direction of Larsi, and this will be effectively address uh, landslide-related uh, risks near Devdaraki. Yes, a new tunnel will be finished, and, but, but this is, I mean, uh, but uh, it depends on how Russia interprets that. And second important thing is that uh, to what extent the existing infrastructure, I mean uh, vehicle infrastructure, uh, to just uh, let uh, these uh, trailers uh, go by. Uh, it's not easy. Uh, you know, just it takes a lot for Georgia just to build uh, uh, our central highway. It takes a lot. And uh, so, and uh, there is one more point, important point, in terms of recovery of railway, of course, in case of political stabilization it's possible, but uh, uh, how much it is beneficial, uh, because, uh, well, cargoes actually are just uh, not on the rise. Thank you very much. Uh, for just exhaustive answer. So, Zal, please tell us, as a person, as an expert of uh, conflicts, uh, so opening of these corridors, uh, uh, will it uh, bring uh, any benefit in terms of uh, uh, contribution to development of uh, our relationships with Abkhazians and Asians? We might not tell the locals uh, yes, actually, I would not call them opponents. I would uh, rather call them our co-citizens. Uh, 
Actually, we are yet talking about those corridors that don't function yet. Actually, there are a lot of things uh, to address, uh, and no one knows uh, how and when these negotiations are over. I mean, uh, Russia and Georgia have to take a lot to come to that. Yes, they signed the agreement, but... Uh, I think we expect a very hard uh, negotiation stage and a lot of nuances must be cleared out. And uh, as for whether this will contribute to address uh, confidence building, uh, well, it can be possibly said that to, up to uh, some point this will contribute to confidence building because if this corridor start work, well, even if it's not very large-scale uh, cargo turnover, and definitely this will be followed with some infrastructure along the railway. And uh, this will contribute to certain uh, communication, contact uh, recovery along the demarcation line between the two communities divided by demarcation, demarcation line. But, well, it may take a long time, but if process starts, I think that there is high probability of that. But of course, we should not cherish, I mean, too many hopes that, uh, I mean, as if this will bring us to our desired results. I think uh, it wouldn't be right to actually inspire our community with such expectations. It's a long-time process, time-taking, and uh, this uh, railway just recovery would be one of the tools that would contribute to creation of uh, additional communication channels between Georgian, Abkhazian, and Russian associations. Thank you very much. So, Tengis, as a businessman and as someone uh, who is involved in uh, peace process, uh, do you expect uh, this uh, recovery of railways um, to become active? Luckily or unluckily, uh, I mean, after the demise of the USSR, business and uh, politics actually are intertwined. And as for the specific issue, I mean, opening the corridor in terms of business, as I said, uh, it will contribute to development of uh, certain businesses uh, along this uh, corridor and will contribute to economic uh, level of the population. But of course, uh, I think it should be weighed a lot, I mean, uh, politically, to what extent it is beneficial for the country. So, and uh, actually, I don't have actually any one-sided answer. Uh, I would rather listen to other people, actually, who know a lot more in terms of uh, political processes. Mario, you just mentioned that uh, the agreement does not stipulate any first major situation. And if uh, so, do you think that in case of uh, first major situation, the agreement should be just a remake? Yes, this agreement is subject to actually a remaking. I think there is one article. I mean, I think it talks about three to four years when this agreement can be amended, but only by those uh, uh, council uh, where three countries, Russia, Georgia, and Switzerland participate. So it's possible to remake, to amend, but uh, those articles uh, which were just actually agreed upon are not going to be changed. Some details can be amended only. And would you like to ask any questions? So please uh, introduce yourself. Nina Chichinitsa, the student club's uh, president and uh, our entity, 
recently has been working on Georgian Abkhazian projects and uh, we get uh, students involved and we are thankful to study around for an opportunity to become the members of your discussion. My question is about uh, Mr. Uh, Patas, your guest. Patas' idea. He well formulated the economic uh, uh, benefits of this uh, corridor. I mean, about what our country is going to benefit from this corridor. And he said that actually we have almost no economic benefits after opening this corridor. And is there any, any factor that would do, uh, actually get the situation better for us, uh, in favor of us? So you're speaking about economic uh, factor, right? Yes, I'm in while negotiating. Thank you very much. Well, as I pointed out, uh, if we put aside political factor and if we follow just economic aspect, uh, important is only one aspect. Uh, from Russia, uh, which is actually generating country of uh, cargoes, to what extent it is possible from Russia through Abkhazia and Georgia and uh, to get uh, uh, and create cargo in Central Asia in post-Soviet uh, period. I mean, uh, from uh, Russia, about 15, uh, 20 million uh, cargo, actually, tons of cargo would uh, move uh, from uh, Russia through Abkhazia. And if we get additionally just X, uh, six or eight uh, million uh, for Georgia, then, uh, I mean, uh, rail wages will be attractive for Georgia. In other case, this project uh, will be only political project. And it's going to be Georgia's contribution, friendly contribution. In terms of uh, recovering uh, brotherly relations, friendly with Abkhazia, but Abkhazia is our land, and it's going to be uh, our land actually, and we shouldn't accent only on tra uh, transporting because in the near future we will have to recover the infrastructure, and uh, Georgia may agree to become not only just transport corridor, but become territories that will contribute to recovery of Abkhazia land. But one more time, I mean. Uh, only in case of regulating political nuances. It's very complicated. No one has a definite answer. We want to recover a relationship with Abkhazia and rebuild nations, but uh, if uh, these economic projects will get us more alienated and will uh, get them more independent, then we we'll are going to have some fears. I mean, why are we doing this? However, personally, I would be always glad as a more communication will have the better it would be uh, and uh, the I mean uh, you know, the thing is that uh, we have some complications about the project which has not been implemented yet I mean Abkhazia Associations just ask for more involvement uh, in terms of uh, implementation of the projects I mean, it means that uh, they talk about some additional just uh, uh, collection fees uh, from South Asia. I mean, step by step, some barriers uh, appeared on the way of this project, and therefore the question is arisen. Okay, uh, Russia just uh, signed this agreement uh, to keep a uh, political face, but, uh, uh, but maybe due to this small bureaucracy, the process is going to be very, very long. Well, let's see. I think we should wait and see.
Thank you. So, and uh, are there any cargoes that uh, move along Abkhazia? Yes. This is uh, from Kvarchel. This is coal cargoes that goes to Turkey. It's about one million uh, uh, ton of coal. I think it's important to capacity. And, uh, uh, vehicles from uh, Belarus, Ukraine, even from Poland, uh, some vehicles uh, enter uh, I mean, through so checkpoint to Abkhazia. But the uh, interesting thing is that uh, in uh, relevant documentation, I mean, uh, it's always uh, international documentation, always Georgia is uh, pointed. Uh, so it's uh, regulated as uh, cargo coming to Georgia. So that's why just uh, this cargo has no problem. And uh, this rule actually works. In this case, uh, they simply just use the image of Georgia. I think it happens in other areas as well. I think it's a very interesting point. But I think our foreign ministry should uh, pay attention I mean, to non-recognition uh, policy. We just announced non-recognition policy. So let's talk about our next uh, block, uh, our partners from Skinavales, uh, whom we just uh, supply us with the local news. Uh, and now Nino Gelashvili will talk about this. So welcome everybody. Last month, um, together with Abkhazian Association colleagues, we continued watching Abkhazian Georgian Association media to see how Georgian media highlights Abkhazian Association related issues and on the contrary. To where Georgia, most important issue was Abkhazia Tatanashvili list and international statement supporting Georgia. A statement of Prime Minister of Georgia one more time proves Georgia's uh, aggressive policy towards Abkhazia and its citizens and uh, seriously diminishes opportunity of agreement. Uh, that's what Absni Press says. Abkhazian media talks about Geneva talks. Unfortunately, Geneva talks in different international format. For many years, Georgian side has been trying to put Georgian Abkhaz Georgian station conflict into Russian Georgian conflict, uh, says the article. So, whom we also mentioned about UN resolution supporting Georgian Abkhazia think that such resolution uh, makes no more sense for just country and member countries. And not resort at Mishvili list was the most important thing in Srin Valley as well. De facto, uh, foreign ministry stated that. What has resulted in actually at least uh, just generated sanctions is a responsibility. While Georgia's government for many years, uh, at different tragedies, actually annihilated thousands of associations, says the ministry. Agency read just got interview uh, from Amir and Diakonov, uh, South Association parliament member. He says that what has resulted in actually list uh, is. Uh, continuation of politics of terror on behalf of Georgia. Some materials were published about the events of 1920 after Georgian Guard in June 1920 opened fire and uh, practiced genocide of South Ossetians and practically no Ossetians were remained in Ossetia and at the same time Ossetian villages were purposefully populated with Georgia. This is the Republic newspaper. In terms of Georgian media, uh, these events are highlighted only from political point of view and they don't pay attention to social economic issues. And media highlighted Gala in Geneva talks uh, and statements of international organizations. Of course, last month, uh, in terms of occupied territories and people living there, the most high-profile thing was uh, preparation and approval of what has resulted to Nashville list. Uh, by the list prepared by Georgia's government, the uh, list covers those persons uh, who were just recognized uh, as uh, kidnappers and torturers, again, and murderers of uh, Georgian citizens. Website ambebi.g uh, compared to other media actively just highlights Sukhumishia. This time, they dedicated their materials to growing suicide rate in Abkhazia. And of course, settlement of Syrians and Jordanian peoples and other issues. Today, that's all, and we will be specially watching next month. Uh, because it's going to be 10th anniversary of August war and it will be very interesting how the media, I mean Georgian Ossetian media is going to highlight these uh, issues and uh, see you later. Thank you very much.
Didi Madluba Nino. Thank you very much, Nino. And uh, at the end of our talk, I have a question for our young people. It's our room. Sometimes we are learning something, something new. So, question is the uh, following. Uh, toponym Dariala, what does it mean? So, toponym Dariala means, uh, I mean, this is Osatian language toponym. It means Dar Alan. It means a uh, door of Alan, uh, which actually, which we got under our control. It would change hands. And uh, after 15th century, after 5th century, after the king of Vahdangar Gasali, uh, this uh, gorge actually belongs to us. And this unites us with Osatians. And uh, in Trusso Gorge, uh, Osation actually just architecture and some castles actually uh, are available, and uh, I would like you to say that. Thank you very much uh, for coming here, and uh, we hope uh, you join us in future. And uh, we'll speak about interesting things with our viewers. Thank you very much. Bye bye.